Hello students, today I'll explain about reproductive system of cockroach. So first I'll give general introduction which include which uh, involves both a male cockroach as well as female cockroach. First of all, cockroach are, uh, are the insects where sexes are separate. It means male is a different individual, female is a different individual. It means unisexuality is present and it is also called dioecious animals. It's also called dioecious animals. And when we say dioecious, the sexes are separate. It means male produces sperm and female produces the ovum and they are the totally different individuals. That means there is no united sex. It means there is no male and female reproductive system in the same individual. So such type is not there in cockroach. So when sexes are separate, there is also a phenomena called sexual dimorphism. Sexual dimorphism is female can be easily differentiated or distinguished from male by externally itself. That means by weaving certain external characters, one can differentiate which will be male and which will be female. So that phenomena is called sexual dimorphism. So the phenomena called sexual dimorphism. Whenever there is a sexual dimorphism, there should be some characters by which male is differentiated from female. So comes this one. That is, how is sexual dimorphism explained? That is, how what are the different sexual dimorphic characters? Sexual dimorphism in cockroach can be explained by sexual dimorphic characters. can be explained by sexual dimorphic characters. So sexual dimorphic characters are what of them? First, in female, So if you see the abdomen of a cockroach, female is going to have a broader abdomen, whereas male abdomen is going to be more narrower. So that is that is also one of the sexual dimorphic character. By, by this we can say that this would be a female in most of the cases and this would be a male. Then second is, the seventh segment covers eighth and ninth to form genital chamber or brood pouch. So genital chamber, this is formed when seven cover, seventh sternum covers the eighth and ninth. Such type of genital chamber where 7th is covered with 8th and 9th is not present in male. It means 9th sternum is visible in case of male whereas 9th sternum is invisible. So 9th sternum is not appearing externally because it is covered by the seventh sternum. 
Then second, then the third here, sexual dimorphic uh, characters, that will be in case of male. Male will have Male will have anal style which arises from the ninth sternum. So that anal style is only present in the male but it is absent in female. So anal style. So anal style is present in male but it is absent in female. So these are just some of the characters. Even other dimorphic characters will be there where antenna size can be there. And one more is if I say the wing will extend beyond the abdomen. In male, in male wing extends beyond abdomen here in case of male what does it mean is the wing is if the wing is present the abdomen like this in case of male but in case of female uh, what happens is the wing is not able to go beyond the abdomen. So, it is crossing here, crossing the abdomen here. But it is not able to in case of female. So, that will be about the, what is called the sexual dimorphism. And sexual dimorphism is explained by sexual dimorphic characters. And these are some of the sexual dimorphic characters. So, cockroach has a well-developed reproductive system. Cockroach has a well-developed reproductive system. So, now coming to what is the uh, male reproductive system and how is the female reproductive system system and of course when it comes to abdomen it is more towards the the reproductive system is towards the posterior part so here just a minute So, I'll be explaining about the male reproductive system first.
So this is the male reproductive system. So this is the male reproductive system and these are the different parts which I'll be explaining in the male reproductive system. So first I'll be explaining about the testes. Testes are, testes is the male reproductive system that produces one of the important reproductive cell called the sperms. So testes is able to produce the sperms. Now testes is located in a particular segment of the cockroach itself. It is not, it is more confined only to a particular segment of cockroach. So it is present between fourth segment, fifth segment and the sixth segment. So in this segments itself, what can be located is the testis, presence of testis is possible, it spans these regions. So testis is trilobed, you can see one, two, three, more or less it is trilobed like this. So it has three lobes, testis. Then, of course, you should know its function. So testis is present between fourth to sixth abdominal segments. And its main function is it produces sperms. Now the testis inside will, uh, will have many follicles and those follicles are group of cells. Those, uh, so inside this testis there will be group of cells, okay. Those group of cells can be called as the follicles and they are named as testicular follicle. It means that the testis have many testicular follicles and inside that testicular follicle the exact uh, location, I mean exact the size, a site where the sperms are produced. So sperms are produced in testicular follicles. Okay, now this is the, this is where, this is the, the explanation regarding the first part, first part of the uh, reproductive system, one of the main parts where sperms is produced about the testis. The next is, after testis, what you can see is there is a duct that continues after the testis. Now this duct is called as vas deferens. Now vas deferens is very thin, delicate tube that arises from testis. So that is about the vas deferens. What is the function of vas deferens? This thin delicate tube is the one that will carry the sperms produced from the testis. Then those sperms are conveyed and passed to next part of reproductive system. It is actually conveyed ultimately to this one that is ejaculatory uh, duct. Okay. So conveys the sperms that will be its main function. Conveys the sperms. So this becomes the region of testis, then this becomes 
the vas deferens okay then then these are the this is going to go to the ejaculatory duct okay so conveys the sperm so from here these are the two structures of the male reproductive system now next structure is which is behind here or beneath here below it that side there is a structure called seminal vesicle and that seminal vesicle is connected to ejaculatory duct so that is the function okay so this will be so main function is conveying a sperm next see between ejaculatory duct and the and this vas deferens at the junction will be seminal vesicle that is behind beneath it or below it like so above is this one mushroom gland beneath this will come and it is in fact the part of mushroom gland lower part of mushroom gland itself will be seminal vesicle so here will be seminal vesicles now coming to mushroom gland this big gland this one it's called as the mushroom gland mushroom gland is also called utricular gland okay now this mushroom gland has a tubules there it is rich in tubules okay it is present at the junction of this vas deferens and ejaculatory duct okay now mushroom gland will have larger tubes at the periphery so it has two portions peripheral portion and the central portion so larger tubes will be present at the peripheral region so this one here this is the peripheral region it is so here in peripheral region longer tubes much longer tubes is supposed to be there whereas in the center here very small size tubes are supposed to be present so therefore the mushroom glands is having the peripheral peripheral long tube where has the central short tube tubes both the tubes now each one has its function the long tube i already explained in excretory system the long tube has uricose gland it can be called as what uricose gland understand so this one it can be called uricose gland and this gland is uh, located here in the peripheral long tube and the main function of this gland is removal of excretory waste so removal which is the excretory waste produced uric acid uric acid is produced so that was about the long tubes in the center in the central region they are short tubes they produce fluids that will help in nourishment of sperms so this is going to help in nourishment of, of the sperms so this has one function this also has another function this is ma mainly it stores the uric acid so this is all about the mushroom gland at the lower end of this gland 
lower end or lower part of this gland, there is a structure called seminal vesicles. So, testis produces a sperm, that sperm now passes to vas deferens and then it has to go to the seminal vesicle and it is present in the lower region, whereas upper region will be the mushroom gland, lower part. Now, if you look from back, upper region will be mushroom gland, lower region will be seminal vesicle. So, contents of this uticular gland can pour into the seminal vesicles. So, what happens here? The large, uh, longer tubules as well as shorter tubules are content of mushroom gland, whereas lower end of it, lower end of it is going to have seminal vesicles. Next, what is seminal vesicles? Now, seminal vesicles, here sperms are temporarily stored, okay. And spermatophore starts forming here. Packets of sperms are called as spermatophores. So now you should know that cockroach produces packets of sperms. That means the sperms are not released individually but sperms are released outside the body in the form of packets which are called spermatophore. So this packets of sperms is called as spermatophore. Or called as spermatophores. So, cockroach produces packets of sperms called spermatophores. So, they start forming first where? In seminal vesicles. Okay. So, therefore here, what is the function? By this you will come to know what is the function of seminal vesicle. The, one of the main functions of seminal vesicle is temporary storage site. Okay. Function of seminal vesicle is temporary storage site. Temporary storage site. That too, so for spermatophore starts forming here in the seminal vesicles. Okay. Now, when, uh, when the sperms are produced, then what is the spermatophore? It means sperms will, suppose this is the outer layer, it is more or less pear-shaped structure it is. For example, this is a pear-shaped structure. This is a structure of spermatophores. Then, say this is the... So, this is a second okay. So, like for example, this is a pear shaped. Permatophore with an opening, then there will be a second wall. Here there is a second wall of spermatophore. Third wall, and then within here will be the motile sperms. Like packets of sperms are produced. Now, these spermatophores starts forming in seminal vesicles. 
and how do they these walls form by the secretions of mushroom gland for example long tube can give rise to one of the walls of the spermatophore that's the inner one okay so next So it was about semi mushroom gland and then now coming to ejaculatory duct. Okay. So this is ejaculatory duct. In ejaculatory duct, In ejaculatory duct, it is a long, it is a tube, it is a muscular tube, ejaculatory duct. So first thing, it should arise from the seminal vesicle. So mushroom gland is there, there will be seminal vesicle here behind and from there comes the ejaculatory duct. So ejaculatory duct is muscular tube. And it also has certain secretory cells inside that also contributes to production of the spermatophores. Okay, that means to produce the packets for those sperms to uh, uh, be present inside the packets. Okay, so now one more thing uh, inside those spermatophores, there is a fluid called spermatic fluid. So, muscular tube, it is ejaculatory duct. This ejaculatory duct is going to open here in one of these asymmetric structures. So you can see this asymmetric structures. So here you can see there is one asymmetric structure here. Okay. So here you can see one asymmetric structure here like this. All asymmetric structures, they are called as Phalomeres or gonapophyses. So ejaculatory duct opens into these phalomeres or gonapophyses. One of the gonapophyses. So that is nothing but the muscular tube of the ejaculatory duct. Now this ejaculatory duct, this ejaculatory duct when it opens, it, is, it has an opening on one side. This opening is called as genital pore. So therefore ejaculatory duct opens through genital pore. Here it opens through the genital pores. Okay, now these genital pore in turn opens where into the chitinous structures that are associated with this genital pore, which are asymmetric and they are called as phalomeres. So all those asymmetric irregular structures that are surrounding the genital pores here in the chamber, those are called gonapophyses. Okay, so this was about ejaculatory duct. Then next is gonapophyses. Gonapophyses. Is, there are many, so it should be gonapophyses. It should be gonapophyses. So gonapophyses are asymmetric or irregular chitinous structure that surround the genital pore.
So they are also hard chitinous structure, irregular chitinous structure will be there. This irregular chitinous structure will surround the genital aperture and they are called as gonapophysis. There are, there are three main types having further substructures, the left, the right and the ventral gonapophysis. So they are, these are irregular chitinous structures. They are supposed to be irregular chitinous structures. So therefore, these gonapophyses are comparable to external genitalia. They are also called external genitalia. External genitalia in the uh, external genitalia in the male. So this was about the, okay. Now you can see, those gonapophyses has another name. What name they have? Phallomere. They're also called phallomere. Here you can see, they are also called phallomeres. Okay, so phallomeres are how many by seeing this, you can say they are here, all irregular structures here surrounding this genital pore. So what you should know, the left phallomere Okay, and this is, see, these are left phallomeres. In the left phallomere, there is one structure opening, understand, this structure from here to here. It is called as the uh, conglobate glands of phallic gland. Now, these uh, irregular structures, ejaculatory duct has the name indicates, it will open in the ventral phallomere. It is opening in the ventral phallomere. Then there is one gland called phallic gland here. So behind it will continue as elongated sac-like structure from here. It will open here in the left phallomere. However, in the right phallomere, there is no opening. So one opening is the ejaculatory duct opening or the genital pore. Ejaculatory duct opening itself is called as the genital pore in the male and another is the gland that opens in the left phallomere. Now about phallic gland. Phallic gland is accessory male reproductive gland. Okay. So, where you can see the phallic gland is, where you can see the phallic gland, here you can see, okay, so here you can see, this gland is elongated till here and it is more sac-like structure, means it is broader at one end and then it becomes long, elongated and then it opens in the left phallomere okay so this phallic gland where it is located beneath them is just behind here that is just below beneath the mushroom gland beneath the mushroom gland Mushroom gland itself is present uh, in uh, between six to seven segment. Okay, that you uh, that you should know. Okay, then beneath that will be nothing but this phallic gland. Oh, okay, so now 
what it produces it produces some secretions whenever its secretions are poured here then spermatophores will be finally completed development of spermatophores will be completed after adding more and more walls i told you there are three spermatic walls more and more walls so this also helps in production of spermatophoric wall so helps production of wall Sperma, spermatophore wall okay so this is about the phallic gland or also called conglobate gland so apart from this what you can see is anal style another is caudal style now uh, anal cerci another is caudal style anal cerci is present both in male as well as female here whereas anal style is only present in male because of which you can differentiate whether it is male or female since this diagram is a male reproductive system it should show two structures anal style as anal style as well as anal cerci whereas in female this is going to be absent you understand this is going to be absent Not. So, this was about uh, the male reproductive system. Then, female reproductive system will be next. So, female reproductive system uh, also has um, certain functions, even structures are there, functions are there. So, they are also totally different, present in a different individual because it is a dioecious animals. So, this will be female reproductive system. Female reproductive system also should have a female reproductive organ called the ovary. So, ovary or female reproductive organ producing the female reproductive cell called the egg or the Ovum. Now, this ovary spans the region, many are there, that is second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth segment. So, within these segments, what will be there is uh, reproductive system structures. Got? So, second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth. So, it is present between second to sixth segment. Now, ovary's main function, ovary's main function is production of ovum or also called production of the egg, which is a reproductive cell. Now, ovary is not it is broader at the base and narrower at the tip. So, at the base it is broader, whereas at the tip it is narrower. And the tip, what happens? It fuses and joins with the ligament. 
okay which in turn joins to fat body which i have explained that is the fat that is present between a body wall and viscera to that fat body that ligament is ultimately going to attach so this is broader at one end it's narrow at this end and it is does not have only one structure here it is further divided into substructures and those substructures are called ovarioles or you can tell ovarian tubules ovarian tubules so what you can see this is one ovarian tubule this long one is another ovarian tubule third fourth fifth sixth further because it is in three dimensional it will be so total eight is going to be there eight ovarian tubule in both the ovaries those ovarian tubules will be producing the exact site where what is produced is ovum is produced okay so that will be about the uh, uh, what do you call okay so okay this was ovarian tubules what happens in ovarian tubules is eggs are produced here in the ovarian tubules and those eggs will be arranged linearly in those ovarian tubules before they are released into this next part called as oviduct So as you can see oviduct here oviduct here oviduct here is going to be very thick and it is also highly muscular pair of ovaries are there and also there will be pair of oviduct got so this was about the muscular tube it is muscular and of course conveys ovum conveys ovum these are some of the structures these are the some structures of male reproductive system muscular tube but is very thick muscular tube but short also short muscular tube it is now next after we duck both the oviducts will fuse and form a common duct here this one this common duct this one is called as common oviduct so common oviduct common oviduct can also be called as the vagina common oviduct is also thick and it opens here at a pore called female genital pore and female genital pore also is surrounded by chitinous structures and they are also they are called female gonapophysis where it acts as a female external genitalia whereas male gonapophysis acts as a male external genitalia so this gonopore is surrounded by these phallomeres or gonapophysis so what you can see structure here in female reproductive system is just to just at above of this oviduct there is a gland here and this uh, it's not a gland it is a storage site rather than telling gland it is a storage site for sperms it is a storage site for sperms and this storage site for sperm is called spermatheca spermatheca is having two chambers but they are asymmetric one left one is bigger whereas right one is uh, 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 not larger but it is small okay so and they are asymmetric therefore this particular st uh, sperm storage site is asymmetric and what it does is it stores the sperm that is its function it is going to 
store the sperms not the spermatophores it will going to store the sperms so sperms that are obtained after copulation will be stored here in the spermatheca what you can see is this is the genital chamber above this genital chamber this position is actually above position here above the genital chamber uh, there is an opening of two of a uh, pair of glands these glands are called as collateral glands okay now what collateral collateral glands so collateral glands actually produce a secretion that is necessary for formation of utheka so they secrete their secretion helps in formation of utheka now what is an utheka it is, is also called as uthekal case or also it is called egg case all is the same it can be called egg case or utheka now what is what you should know in utheka is you know it's another name it is produced by secretion of collateral glands these glands are one pair one is bigger both are branched glands okay they are not unbranched uh, or they are like they are not sac like they are actually branched so it's a branched gland so you can see this um, left one is bigger than the right even though they are branched left one is bigger than right when they pour their contents here the contents will start producing egg case now what is egg case so egg case is produced by collateral gland that you know what will be placed here a female can produce female can produce 9 to 10 uthekas 9 to 10 uthekas now inside this uteka it is like case inside this uteka fertilized eggs will be present okay so here fertilized eggs are going to be present inside the uteka around 14 to 16 fertilized eggs can be placed inside the uteka understand that means consider now this is the egg case inside this egg case fertilized eggs will be placed okay so therefore that egg case is able to be produced due to the secretions of this collateral glands okay this is about say 8 mm okay so, so it is about 8 mm and this will be present so this whole thing is the genital chamber of the female this anterior portion is the genital chamber pouch genital pouch and posterior portion will be called uthekal chamber so uthekal chamber only what will be uh, present is utheka is going to be present so these are the points these are the points some of the points which you should know in you know regarding the utheka okay here also gonapophysis are there that surrounds the genital aperture okay now uh, coming to how do uh, reproduction occur so 
after copulation so first is what mating occurs between the male and a female cockroach phenomena called copulation so during copulation what happens is the that is the gonapophysis male external genitalia will help in deposition of spermatophores inside the body of female that is in the genital chamber of female understand here what happens sperms will be released and it is going to be stored in spermatheca so from here the sperms will be released and stored in spermatheca so when sperms are stored during that time what is produced is utheca is going to be produced and the sperms will be uh, the eggs that are coming in the genital pore and the sperms both gets fertilized and then they will be placed in this utheca okay so what happens after this utheca is eggs are deposited outside okay the egg case is deposited outside now so there will be a release of sperms understand then storage of sperms in spermatheca and then fertilization with the egg that is fertilization occurs then after fertilization fertilized eggs eggs deposited in utheca fertilized eggs are finally deposited in utheca now utheca which is produced will be laid in a particular that means the laying of utheca or the egg case along with the fertilized egg will be in particular regions for example in the crevices okay in damp crevices the utheca in the safe place it is going to be deposited so utheca laid utheca laid next will be utheca is laid in crevice and that crevice is typically going to be a damp place and of course safer place then what development occurs afterwards so egg is fertilized already so fertilized egg starts developing so egg fertilized egg is start developing then it forms an immature intermediate called nymph after a nymph is formed this nymph further forms adult cockroach this nymph is going to form what adult cockroach now egg develops into nymph there is some difference between a nymph and an adult cockroach so nymph is smaller in size whereas adult is larger in size nymph does not have wings adult do have wings now coming to when wings are not there then when wing will develop only wing pads will be there and that too in the penultimate molting that is leaving the last molting the previous nymph stage the penultimate molting the wing pads are supposed to be there so 
penultimate that is last but one what develops is the wing pad last time so here what happens small and of course here color will be dark brownish color see you should also know one more point that uteka will have reddish dark or brownish uh, the black blackish brown color it is going to have so it's basically a dark color even uteka will be a darker colors so here this uh, adult cockroach also will be dark, darker in color there is a dark brown like that this will be paler in color less pale means lighter in color okay pale or light color it is going to be there understand so that is the difference between a nymph and an adult so immature intermediate during so whatever metamorphosis is occurring it is a slow slow process slow development takes place slow development process of metamorphosis is very slow Therefore, it is called pyrometabolus. This word is called as a pyrometabolus. Egg develops into nymph. Nymph will molt many times before it grows into an adult cockroach. So, it is supposed to molt for 13 times molds 13 times it molds 13 times before it forms an adult cockroach but this development itself is a slow development and that is why it's called as a power metabolus so this is about the female reproductive system So here what the egg is produced in the the egg is produced the egg is produced here goes into oviduct and then comes into common oviduct later on it is fertilized and deposited in utheka so this completes female reproductive so this whole female reproductive uh, system uh, is ultimately meant for production of egg, transfer of egg and including it in the Uteka and their ultimate deposition in the damp crevices. Now what is the, uh, what do cockroach, does it harm or is it good for, cockroach is no, um, cockroach can harm food products so they can destroy cockroaches can destroy food products cockroaches can destroy food products that's time and it can contaminate the food also it can contaminate food so when I say contamination of food so uh, what happens is uh, suppose a cockroach leg has certain pathogens or a bacteria and now it uh, comes on to the food then those pathogens present on its leg can get transferred onto the food and if healthy individual consume that food he can get the disease so it is responsible for Mostly passive transfer of disease. So this is very important. Passive transfer, passive vector it is, is going to transfer passively. So passive transfer of diseases. Okay. So of course, the cockroach is a prey for many other animals. So here it destroys food products, it contaminates the food and it creates a stinky environment also because of its fissures and also passive transfer of disease. These are the main uh, disadvantages of cockroach. So this completes 
cockroach reproductive system. So uh, therefore, multiple choice question will be continued in the next class.